toward the attacks of and it seemed to have like a mild repellent effect, but it didn't work enough. So I hung a Christian cross over my bed as well. I was just trying everything in the book that I could think of um, and it didn't help. And then something very strange happened because one day I slept at my boyfriend's house and I took the Christian cross off at night. I put it on the table and my boyfriend had a lot of chocolate papers there and afterwards he threw that golden cross out with the trash and I lost it that way. I didn't even know how to explain that to my grandma, but I'm sure that the evil spirits did that. And, I, and then um, I had a bit of bad good luck because I met a person who came to have a card reading and she told me that she was a hered, um, how to say, hereditary witch and that she and her twin brother both had magic powers. And then I told her about my problem and she said to me, no matter what you do, but you mustn't give in to these things. And that was already clear to me that I wasn't going to give in to that stuff ever. But that was somehow the sentence that should be the one that saved me in the end. Because after that, I tried a few other things. I didn't know any magic then, now I do. So I couldn't defend myself with magic. Um, but I did know a little bit about runes. So first I tried to draw some runes and hang them over my bed. And the runes were very effective for me because it kept the thing off for a whole week, which was amazing because I had several attacks per night at that time. And this whole thing was going on for over a year. Um, it got so bad that at night when I went to bed, I would, I would almost cry myself in the sleep like I didn't want to sleep because I was terrified if I closed my eyes this would start again but a human being cannot go without sleep so eventually I would fall asleep and then this would happen I become even more terrified and then finally one day it just came again and when it came I said mentally uh, do your worst but you will never win and boy, it did do its worst. I mean, it shook me. It was a complete invasion. I felt it was really like some kind of astral rape. It was really bad, but I kept like a mantra repeating. I will never give in. You will never win. You will never win. I will never join your side. I will, I will, I will never ever give in. And after that, it went away and never came back. Mm. And that was the end of that episode. And then I didn't have this severity of attacks ever again. And that thing never came back. And in that house, I never had any problems again. Well, um, I, had I, had I had a number, yeah, number of similar things with, with the, uh, the being crushed down in the bed at night. Yeah. Every, every time a prisoner completely recovered and, and we got rid of the voices at three o'clock in the morning at my house, you know, like 15 miles away from the prison, I was being crushed down into the bed, you know, yeah. and I couldn't move. It, it was like yeah. I could just feel something crushing me down. And that happened every single time some one of the prisoners recovered. And I was terrified, you know, and again, I couldn't talk to anybody about it. It was, uh, uh, it, it happened over and over and over every time one of them recovered. And you, you talk about that icky electrical energy. Well, Toward the uh, end of the time I was I was working uh, in the prison, I got to feel um, when these things were angry at me, and what they they would become most furious when I went to tell the the patient that these things were energetic parasites. They did not want that information out, and then that uh, that ooky electrical feeling would just hit. I I could feel it. It was it was like. Um, it's a very, there's no other feeling like it. It's like this cold, icky electrical energy that it just starts buzzing my entire body. I could tell how, how angry they were, how strong they were, just based on the feel. So the patient could no longer lie to me about whether they're hearing voices. So when I, the, I worked for 10 years in the ER doing psych crisis, and, uh, you know, I'd ask, uh, ask the patient, are you hearing voices right now? And some of them would lie to me and say, uh, no, I'm not, you know, just to get out of there. And I tell them, oh, yeah, you are. And this is how strong they are. Why are you lying to me? And they were shocked. You know, so it's that same electrical icky energy that you were talking about, Shakti. Um, mm -hmm. I can feel when they were around. One time I was meditating up on my roof 
You know, I wasn't even in any kind of clinical setting and I got hit by that. But it, it's a very unique feeling. Um, mm -hmm. There's no, no other feeling like it. Yeah, um, I was, uh, I had that feeling of being crushed in the bed twice that happened to me. Just lying, lying in bed and I thought I was awake, but actually I wasn't because, but I, was, I thought I was awake because everything in the bedroom was where it should be and everything. And I just thought, oh, it's morning time. And I'm probably just trying to get up now. And I couldn't move. I just could not move. And someone kept pressing me and pushing me and pushing me. And I kept pushing back. Push me, I had to get up. I, kept, I just kept at it. And eventually it went. And then I woke up. I really woke up, you know. I was like, oh. wow. <laughs> and that oh. was freaky. That freaked me out. And then it happened another oh, yeah. time as well. But it was a, that was a good, good 10 years between those two experiences. So there was obviously something trying to get in there, you know. Uh, I was fully awake and being, you know, I started praying. Yeah. And finally it, it broke and, and left me alone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, prayers from different traditions work. Um, I mean, later, yeah. later I got initiated into yoga and I started um, using a mantra. I started using a mantra of the, of the god Shiva. Um, and so uh, after I got initiated, I was living in Hong Kong. And I used to repeat my mantra all the time. I would have my little mala bag with me and I would be having it with me on a bus or on the ferry on transport because, you know, in these big cities, you spend a lot of time on transport and it's totally lost time of your life. At least I can do something spiritual while I'm on the transport. So the mantra became kind of ingrained in my mind. And I did have a few of these psychic attacks during my time in Hong Kong, but there weren't that many, but I did have them once in a while. And after I had my initiation one night, there was one of these attacks where I was being paralyzed and pinned down. And in the dream, I was still in the dream at that, the first one. Um, I repeated, I remember the mantra, I repeated it three times and it immediately broke the lock of the paralysis. So I know that this is very powerful. I also know that Buddhist monks can also drive out entities with Buddhist mantras. So I think it doesn't really matter too much which tradition um, people are using, but as long as, as you have uh, faith and you follow that path for a while, so it has power for you. The Christian tradition didn't work for me at all. I think I'm not so inclined for whatever reason, but with the Vedic mantras, I've, I've actually had no more attacks. I've not had this kind of attack for at least 10 years. So I've now finally come to the point where I'm pretty much impervious. It would have to be something like on a very, very high demonic level to be able to even come near me. Um, I mean, I don't want to be tempting it. I don't want to be showing it the finger. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm feeling pretty confident that I finally overcome that. So I'm also trying to help other people to overcome it. And the two key points is purity and spiritual strength. I think these are the two, the two key points. The person has to be transformed and purified as well as the environment. And then you will become impervious. Yeah, they got me good um, right before I, I was scheduled to speak with um, um, oh, it, it's a big broadcaster over here in the U.S. Uh, uh, I can picture his, his face, but I can't get his name. But it was like uh, a week and a half before I was supposed to go on with him. I was down in Mexico and all of a sudden my right arm froze up and it was just extremely painful. And it, I went to bed one night normal. Woke up the next morning, I couldn't move my arm and it was just killing me. So, you know, I told the, the people I was with, I said, I got to get back to the U.S. Something's, something's bad wrong. Uh, as soon as I got back, I went to the ER and it was a staph infection that, that erupted out of nowhere. And it knocked out um, th that, that interview. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, that's typical. I've noticed that when people are seeking help, and they have this kind of problem that dark forces, they try to prevent the people to do anything to get rid of them. So obviously, if you had done that interview, maybe that would have changed the lives of many people for the better. So the dark forces played a trick on you and you didn't have enough protection to prevent that from happening, unfortunately. Well, yeah, they, they got me good. So that knocked me out for six months. I was okay. on IV antibiotics um, and but uh, 
they they waited six months later i went on and i did the broadcast and it went over good but yeah the, i know it was them because it, it erupted out of nowhere a staph infection in the shoulder i didn't injure the shoulder i didn't do anything to it it was just boom overnight mm. and, uh, six months before i could i could do any interviews after that also the left or the right side I didn't catch that. Was it your left or your right shoulder? Just it was the right it. shoulder. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Because often these things come through the left side, but obviously it can be anywhere. Um, you know, you could have avoided it probably because you need to do you need to do regular cleansing of the place where you where you sleep and protection. That's one level. And the other one is to use um, spiritual bath salts that have been spiritually charged and then you, you, you bathe and you get rid of these things. You can also do prayers while you're in the bath, but it definitely has to have some kind of salt in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I do have Epsom salt here and I do that from time to time. Yeah. yeah so um, you up first with prayers if you want them to be really effective and then make sure the whole body gets immersed, including the head or pour water over the head. Okay. And Shakti, you've dealt with, like Jerry's obviously dealt with a lot of people in, in, in the prison system and all that, and you've dealt with people who've come to you for help. Uh, what have you yeah. seen? Is it similar to what what Jerry has been through? Of course, obviously, yeah. prisoners, they're kind of, you know, something's yeah. happened to them and they're, they're ended up in prison for some reason. And that's, a, you know, prisoners obviously are going to be in, these parasites are going to automatically go for these people, aren't they? Sadly, yeah. and, and I mean, doesn't make them even worse. You can pick, pick things up from a place. So if you're in a bad place, like in a prison, um, in a hospital, um, uh, you've been in a morgue or on a graveyard, this is where you can pick things up from the place. But it isn't only the place. It is also things that people do if they are in a kind of a bad state emotionally. So um, for let's let's go through a few case scenarios, maybe. Um, from my experience. So scenario one is a childhood possession. Childhood possession happens because uh, when the child is very small in the first four, four years of their life, they do not have a complete aura to shield themselves. And they should ideally be in the energy field of the mother or father all the time. That means near the parents. But when nowadays we have it that the children will sleep in a separate room, that would be okay if the room had some spiritual talismans and protection wards, but most people don't do anything and would probably not even have a cross in a room. Um, so if the, if the room is not protected and the child is sleeping in a separate room, then these astral parasites will try to attack the child. And at this point, there is a struggle going on between the spirit of the child and these astral parasites. And this will manifest in the child having nightmares. So all of a sudden the child doesn't want to sleep in his own room anymore. And he will tell mommy, I don't want to be in my room. There's something scary. I've seen a dark man in a wardrobe. Like if I had a child, I'm not having children, but if I had a child and I heard this, I wouldn't be saying, oh, darling, you're just fantasizing. There's nothing. I would be like red alert, dude, dude, dude. And I would immediately, uh, you know, smudge the room, do all kind of exorcisms. And <laughs> probably let the child sleep with me in the room for a few nights. <laughs> but the problem is that parents don't take that serious. So the child will keep on fighting with these astral entities. Now, if the child can actually win, but it's seldom the case, then they will leave the child alone and the child will get a lot stronger. But if the entities succeed, they will steal a piece of the soul of the child. So this is the shamanic way of seeing it. And when a piece of the soul of the child is uh, stolen, it doesn't mean the child is doomed or go to hell or the devil got him. It's not like this, but it's like a bit of the child's energy. And the child afterwards will be weaker. The health can also be weaker so that the child is more likely to uh, get sick or you can notice a change in character. The child may be more timid, um, less playful, um, maybe bad tempered. The child will change for the worse to some extent and or may just not feel as happy as before anymore, not having this, this carefree, sunny, happy nature that he had before. 
and um, the energy body of the child will then be weaker. So as he grows up, he will be more prone to either getting more entities or coming in contact with negative things also could be more easy to get sick. So that's the kind of first scenario how you can get it. It starts off because you're too small. You can't protect yourself and these negative entities prey on people. Now, I believe that because um, of things that are being done in this world, that we are having a kind of an infestation on the astral with negative things that didn't exist like this, say, 200 years back. Sure, there were always spirits and evil spirits, but now it's an evil spirit pen 